This is the positive zone, empowerment, success, leadership. It is all inside of us. The subtle changes that we can make within our lives can lead us to those things, and we are going to be talking about that today. If you have any questions or any comments that you'd like to make on our new show, The Positive Zone, go to WDHT-TV, our Facebook page, and also send comments to WDHT-TV at gmail.com. We want to hear from you. Welcome to Christopher John, Doris Haig, and Justin Ford. We are going to talk about the positive zone and how we are all going to change our lives in a positive way. Absolutely. Justin, welcome to the Thank show. You. They're all three are going to be our co-hosts and you will see them on the positive zone on a weekly basis. And Justin, tell us about the positive zone and tell us about your story. So I, uh, I, we came together as the positive zone, and obviously the positive zone is, is, is what the title means. It's, it's all about being positive and empowered. And we came together to really make an impact. You know, uh, as you'll hear from Chris, you know, Chris uh, initially seen the need in schools with working with young people uh, about, you know, young people really living based on circumstance-based living, you know, the struggles and the obstacles in life. And I've, uh, I've been a motivational speaker for the last 13 years going into schools and working with young people, sharing my story of overcoming obstacles and circumstances. I dropped out of high school and got into a lot of trouble. Uh, but, you know, turning my life around, being able to go into schools and make an impact, and then partnering with Chris, who had already created the, the Positive Zone program, and then Doris, and we've all come together to, to go into schools and really make an impact and, and work with young people, and not just young people, but teaching people how to live empowered lives. and. Um, co you know, lives that are based on commitment and not focused on obstacles or circumstances. Yeah, absolutely, and, and, and I think we all have that within ourselves to be absolutely. able to be positive and to yeah. find those skills within ourselves. Absolutely. Um, and it's those boundaries um, that we create for ourselves. Uh, so making those changes and, and having the tools to do that is, is so Very vital. Important. Chris, yeah. you created the positive zone, um, and, 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 and from what I understand, you've changed a lot of lives. Um, to the better and to the positive. Uh, so tell us about that and, and what was your inspiration? It, well, it was actually a necessity. I was a teacher uh, for 14 years in inner city Flint. And what I found is I had a lot of brilliant kids, but they were failing. And it wasn't because they weren't smart. It wasn't because I was a bad teacher. It was simply because all of those challenges, like Justin mentioned, you know, kids were coming to school with so many challenges and circumstances they were facing that were constantly getting in the way. So I had to come up with a way to overcome those, to, to reach the real kid inside of the kid. Um, and by doing so, uh, we were able to you know, really get kids out of their own way and allow them to really focus at a new level and succeed at a new level as well. What I didn't realize at the time was what works with students in a middle school classroom is the same thing that can help people from all uh, ages, Absolutely. all walks of life, <laughs> yes. you know, achieve Absolutely. the same types of success. Absolutely. And Doris is giggling. So talk to us, Doris, how you, how you were introduced to the positive zone. And um, I know we had talked a little bit about um, your situation on, on another show, but give us a synopsis. Well, in, in the last show I said that Justin Ford, you know, we went to ninth grade homecoming together. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we went down some <laughs> different paths um, yeah. along the way, but um, we reconnected again. And again, you know, he said is, he's like, you, you're great at sales and marketing. That's what you're, you know, you're phenomenal at. And we sat down and we met and then some things started happening. And again, it was just becoming, you know, under Chris and Justin was coached from Chris. So he yep. gave me a lot of feedback and said, you, can, you know, you really, really need this. And it changed who I am as a person. Um, and so I think that's just kind of happened and the three of us and, and Sherry, you know, we all started together and it was just one of those powerful things that we just all started collaborating and the, you know, someone's weakness is someone else's strength and we just see it as that strength. And it's like we're our own business, our own nonprofit, yep. we are living what we're teaching and we're seeing it with ourselves of how we have grown so much over the past few years by incorporating this to ourselves too. Yeah. And, and you've both, I mean, all three of you have had um, a story about where you were and how you've gotten to where you are right now in bringing yourselves together to try to change others. Justin, talk to us about 
your background. I know you had a shaky background, yeah. but look at you now. Look yeah. at where you're at. And 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 you know, you both knew each other in ninth grade. Yeah. You sort of went your separate ways, and you both had some you know shaky years oh, yeah. behind you. Yeah. Um, so tell us about your story. Yeah. Wow. So um, you know, I come from a broken home. You know, I grew up in uh, Taylor, Michigan, with Doris. Mm -hmm. Got into high school very. Uh, you know, very excited about life, you know, played football, uh, you know, had the opportunity. My grandfather was an attorney. He told me, you know, just go through high school, graduate, go to college, and I'm going to give you my law firm. I was really focused on success, and around 10th grade, 11th grade, you know, I just started, you know, going down the wrong path. I started drinking, started using drugs, and by the time I was... Wrong group of friends. Wrong group of friends, yeah. That'll do it. And, and a lot of peer <laughs> pressure, you know, and by the time sure. uh, 12th grade rolled around, actually, I uh, dropped out of high school as a senior to pursue uh, living a life of drugs and alcohol. I was selling drugs, doing drugs. I had uh, moved out of my parents' house um, at the time to live with my girlfriend in high school. So no one was there to tell me to go to school. No one was there to you know, tell me to you know, do the right thing. And uh, within a very short period of time, I had acquired eight misdemeanors and a felony. Uh, drugs and alcohol, went to you know, multiple different jails, got into a drunk driving accident, almost lost my life. And just by the time I was 19 years old, I just seen my life spiral out of control. Uh, I had a brand new daughter at the time. She was just born as I was turning 18. She just turned 15 yesterday. And um, at the age of 19, I, after my drunk driving accident, I just really had to come to a, a decision of changing my life. And I took a, a spiritual path. I became a Christian and it really just transformed my life. And here I am today when I was 20 years old, I started going into schools and sharing my story with young people that uh, they don't have to go down that path. And I allowed what I had went through to, to, to tell them that, hey, you know what, you think it's fun to go to a party and drink and maybe experiment with drugs or have sex and do these things, but I wanna tell you that this can really spiral out of control. And I've, you know, being 33, Doris and I know, you know so many people that we went to school with who, who have passed away because of mm -hmm. the same lifestyle. So uh, being able to reach out on my own and go into schools and encourage people and teach people led me down the path to meet Chris mm -hmm. to where now we have a program where it's it's we're really making an impact and we're doing it you know all together. That's that's amazing yeah. um, and the fact that you found that path is amazing as well uh, and and we can easily sit here and say, you know, you can change your life and you can do it, but it's not easy. No, it's I mean, not. it is very difficult, very difficult and it's hard to find the tools. And, and even if you do, you have to be convinced that this is what you want to do and you have to be convinced that you want success and you have to be convinced that you want to change things. Yeah. So how, with the work that you do now, I mean, you're all three very success stories um, from your backgrounds to where you are, but how do you approach individuals who were at your stage in life and yeah. and finding that there's no hope that there's no 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 reason to live that there's no reason to go forward we can say empower yourself it's in you you know and use all the buzzwords mm -hmm. but right. how do we do it right. how do we you get know, those people there I know they're gonna have something it just the one thing I wanted to say too is like with Justin it was taking a one step it mm -hmm. was what one step to say I'm gonna go now to schools to go speak and tell my story, which is not hard. We can all talk about right. ourselves, but yep. I think from that too is that one step going and talking to other people. Yep. It's they say that sometimes when you teach is the is, best it's the learning. For herself. Absolutely. Yeah. For me, this is my own thing is taking one step, one step. Sometimes we just stay there. It's just taking even that smallest step of something, maybe reaching out to somebody different, or maybe making a phone call, or maybe you know, going to a school or even if that, it's just one step. So that's more for me. That's movement. Yeah. One yeah. step is yeah. movement rather than, yeah. than, than being, being stagnant. Yeah. Chris. Yeah, sure. Your experience. You know, there, I mean, there are, there are four words that, that take care of what you're asking about. They're simply, what do you want? If you can get in a conversation with somebody and get to the point where you can ask that question, what do you want? It might be the smallest want in the world. It might be, I want a piece of candy might want might, and usually it starts negative well I want to not have to deal with this anymore you know whatever it is then you can ask okay well why do you want that you know you hear another answer well why is that important to you you hear another answer what would that provide for you you know you hear another answer what would that make possible you hear another answer so you want that yeah and there you go 
All right, Chris, I just want to sit home and watch video games. I don't want to deal with the world. Mm -hmm. I want everybody to leave me alone, and I just want to deal with my world, video games and pizza, and that's it. And I, I don't want to think about school. I don't want to think about anything else. Awesome. That's what I want. I'm glad that you've acknowledged what you want. So it's good to have that clarity. So um, what does that do for you? When, when you're, when you're it makes me not think. It makes me not want to want to want to want to feel the pain of the world outside ah, so you're free you have freedom from pain right and when you're free from pain what 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 is there when you're free from pain happy makes me happy when so I'm what free are, from what pain, are the so ten, I don't think what are the 10 ways the 10 greatest ways that you've been happy in life what are the 10 things that you've experienced that have made you more happy than anything else pizza video games <laughs> okay going out with my friends um, ten things? See, the three are the things that you started with, right? Mm -hmm. Now when you get to four, five, six, now you start actually accessing what you really do want. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. And, and I think a lot of times too, you know, there's there's so many people. And I don't like pizza, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Not too much of it. You know, there's so many people right now, even watching this show, that are struggling. They're going through life, you know, they're faced with circumstances. I don't care how much money you have, I don't care what your background is, I don't care what color skin you have, suburbs, inner city, we're all faced with the circumstances of life. Absolutely. We are not, you know. Doesn't uh, discriminate. Exactly. So I think what happens is so many people are faced with <clears throat> circumstances and it's what we teach that they lose focus on what they're committed to or maybe they don't even know what their commitments are in life. And when I connected with Chris, you know, I've been, you know, some would look at my life and say, wow, Justin, the way you've turned your life around since you were a teenager, you know, they may look at my life and see how successful I was early on, but I knew that there was a lot of struggles that I was dealing with. You know, I'm married, I have four kids, you know. Bless um, your heart. <laughs> yeah. Early on, I went through uh, foreclosure, bankruptcy. I mean, a lot of money in the industry I was in just kind of crashed. And everything that I did, it was like a roller coaster ride. And I would start something, I'd be really passionate about it, but then I would like hit a wall. And when I came together with Chris, you know, for the purpose of the Positive Zone and working together in the schools, Chris is actually one of my mentors and has been working with me for several years, helping me to access all of the greatness that's within me. And he's been able to draw that out of me. And I've seen, you know, my life just completely change and go to new levels over the last several years. And there's so many people that, like I said, watching now and, and every, everybody that we work with or go throughout life and come in contact with that have that same greatness within, they just don't know how to access it because they're so focused on everything that's going on in life. Here's the beautiful thing, because we have tools for that. Yep. You no, know, we've developed tools for exactly that. We can we could take anyone, anytime, any place, yep. any situation, and we can we can handcraft those tools mm -hmm. for them so they can step into the life that they were actually designed to live, the right. life that they actually desire to live, you know, access all of their potential so they can achieve all that they were created to achieve. Absolutely. And that's a passion of ours. And that's why, honestly, that's why we're together here. That's why we started on this journey. It's This is not an easy journey by no, any means. No. Right. You want to talk about no. circumstances and things that you have to overcome and deal with in order to, you know, make any kind of endeavor like this successful. It has not been easy. However, it is so, such a passion of ours. Yep. Uh, you know, kids, teenagers, young adults have such... A struggle especially in this day and age I mean oh, while yeah. I was growing up honestly I think yeah. I had it easy because I mean I lo watched I love Lucy and I watched <laughs> leave it to beaver yeah. and you know there was totally there was world. there was FCC regulations in regards to what goes on TV oh, yeah. um, and things weren't all okay right. there were there were things that you knew you did not deal with yeah. um, right, right. The, the street lamps went out you were in the house mm -hmm. um, you know we didn't have the the texting and the sexting and all yeah, these different right, yeah. things that our kids are being yeah. exposed to and the internet and the porn yeah. and, and everything. everything. So it's so difficult for someone to realize that self-control and not be drawn in. Yeah. And like you said earlier, you were involved with all, I mean, I think yeah. you, you, you went through the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that, you left anything that untouched. Was, that, that was the <laughs> So, um, but you, you, you found yourself, yeah, and absolutely. you were able to, you know, go over over that hump yeah. and deal with those things. Yeah. Um, so, what was, what was your aha moment, or was there an aha there moment? Because this is a process. Yeah, it, it is a process, and I mean, early on, it was. I remember sitting in jail, and I was, I think, up for a couple of days without sleeping on drugs and alcohol, 
And I remember being, I think I was in the Royal Oak Jail. They picked me up for um, disorderly conduct. I was always you know, causing a problem wherever I went. And I remember being in the jail and sitting there so dehydrated because of the drugs that I was on that I actually was drinking water out of the toilet. Oh, okay. And I remember asking myself, how did, how did I get here? You know, how did I get here? Because just a few years prior, I was on the honor roll. I was doing good. My grandfather said, I'm going to give you my law firm. You know, I was, I was on a really good path, but how did I get sucked off the path so quickly? Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, looking at each moment and I, the next one that really did it was I got into a drunk driving accident. And I almost lost my life. And I remember sitting, not knowing how it happened, but I, I blacked out. They said I blew a .21. I was two times the legal limit. And I was sitting in the uh, jail downtown and I just said, you know, I've got to change. I've got to change. And I left that jail. I knew I burnt all my bridges with my, my family and my friends. I was on probation in four cities at the time, so I just violated. I was, like, facing some, some pretty hard consequences. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying, you know, I'm willing to change my life. So I made a decision to go to an amazing um, uh, shelter slash ministry out in Pontiac called Grace Centers of Hope. And I literally jumped on a bus at 19 years old, and I went and said, I'm, I'm going to this place to change my life. And that began the journey of transformation. There's been many you know, changes along the way and, and situations that have brought me to where I am, but that was the, the very first one that I knew that I was the only one that could make the change. And I had to, like Doris said, take the first step. It was up to you mm -hmm. to, to, to make take the, the change. First step. Absolutely. And so leaving that, how, how long did you stay there? I was there for six months. I mean, I literally turned my back on all my friends. I had to literally pull myself out of the environment and lifestyle that I was living. And, and I was in this program, like you didn't go out, you didn't leave. I mean, I was there for six months and I laid a foundation that would ultimately bring me to where I am today. And when you, when you were there, what was the message that you were given? So was this a spiritual? Yeah, it was a spiritual, um, it was a Christian uh, faith-based treatment center. Uh, and it gave me the the ability to know that there's more to life, right? And I know many people choose different paths, and that was the path that I chose. And that that six months allowed me to make changes in my life where I realized that I didn't have to look to drugs, alcohol, sex, and all of those things to meet a need, that I could, you know, I could look to God to meet my need. You know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. and we all need that base, Absolutely. regardless of, of what spiritual concept it is, as long mm -hmm. as you have that base and belief, um, it, it helps you from within. So, Absolutely. so then, after leaving there, you yeah. connected so, with yeah, Chris. Yeah, so let's fast forward yes. you know, 10 years. Um, you know, I got married at 22, so I'm uh, actually celebrating my 10-year anniversary next month. Mm -hmm. Uh, have a Four kids. Yeah, 15. That, 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 that puts you yeah. in hero status yeah, already. <laughs> so 15, 12, 9, and 2, you know, um, started young and, you know, obviously going through and, and not really knowing how to be a dad, how to be a husband. There's sure. just been a lot of challenges. But again, staying committed because life's not easy. You know, it's, it's about not giving up and getting to a place where, and this is funny, I remember leaving, I was at Northwestern High School in Detroit. And I was, uh, I had started a, a, a speech called the Champions Challenge where I would go in and talk to kids about success and leadership and get the kids to all respond and they all wanted. And I remember hearing stories. I attended one of those, yeah. it was amazing. Yeah, thank you. Um, and hearing these kids talk about, you know, how they walked in on their parents being murdered and just their mm. dads are in prison, just horror stories that you sure. hear about with these young people. And I remember leaving Northwestern High School, walking out of the school in the parking lot, weeping literally in tears because I said, how, how can we truly make a difference? I don't feel, yes, I can go in and speak for an hour or be in a school for a whole day and get these kids excited. And I've seen the feedback that it really made a difference. But then when I leave... What do they do with that? They go, back, the to the, yeah, they go back to the same neighborhood. They go back to the same circumstances and life is there. I remember praying in my car that day. I said, God, send me a program or give me a program that that can can really make an impact long term with these kids and literally i met chris two weeks later mm -hmm. and basically i remember chris saying you know what i've been praying <laughs> for god to send me someone to be the messenger mm -hmm. right. to go into the school and here we are what a story yeah. what a story and so you you are a success story uh, you know you you you're you're, you're 
successful in business. Yeah. You're successful in trying to change other people's yeah. lives. And of course, Chris and Doris are, are on that same path. Yeah. So Doris, how has this changed you as well? I mean, what is, what is, the, what is the message that you give to these kids that are in this environment and 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 like we said earlier it doesn't discriminate I don't right. care where you are you can yep. be in the yep. best situation sure. or you can be in the worst situation and if that inner being is not where it needs to be oh, and yeah. and that realization that yes you can be more than what you are right now and it doesn't matter what right. I mean you can be a garbage person mm -hmm. but you can be the best garbage person oh, yeah. in the That's world right. you yeah. know and and it doesn't matter as long as you know that you have to be the best Yep. at what you want Absolutely. within your soul. So how do you transition that message to these kids? It, well, I think something that's very important is when I'm with the kids is one thing for me that um, I kind of lacked is having a voice of empowerment. Like I was more of a quiet person. I didn't really want to say anything. I didn't really want to, you know, do anything. But um, one of our students um, in Osborne last time in I remember the first time we did a little group and she's like, I just can't talk. I'm just, I have this fear of speaking that I'm going to say something wrong. And as soon as I, she said it, you know, it just resonated with me and I could, I just you had a flashback of like, oh my gosh, you know, I used to be that way. And then, so when I talked to her about it, I said, I know how you feel. I know exactly how you feel. And you know what? I'm going to let you show up. And then I said a story about myself as we started working with her more and we incorporated the tools and everything else, like. Remember at the end, she like sends me mm -hmm. a text message. She's like, guess what? I'm running for class president next mm -hmm. year. And I was that's like, wonderful. that a girl, you know? And I think that's, it, it's really crazy. It's because all of us, we all have a different story. And mm -hmm. the cool thing is everybody is on their own journey. If we were all on the same journey, it would be a really, really boring sure. right. earth. Is right. that we're all so you much bring different. bring a lot to so the table. It's like, Challenges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Justin will connect with certain people. Sherry connects. Maxine. Chris connects. Like we all connect kind of differently, yeah. but it sparks up something in ourselves and it's kind of that healing back to ourselves. And then we see the kids as well, like have this journey. It's just Change. really, really, yeah. yeah. It's okay, we're talking about the tools, yeah. right? Yeah. What are the tools? Yeah. Now, if, if you know, we have someone in our life that we want to, to help or, yeah. you know, the, the, the kids that are at the schools, um, what are the tools? What do you tell these kids to find within their soul within their being the tools that they need to change where they're at like Justin did yeah absolutely you know um, and what, we're, we're over the you know the video games and the pizza <laughs> so <laughs> is step two <laughs> right so Doris mentioned the young lady who has struggled to you know, find her voice and she was a little quiet shy probably low confidence uh, you know everybody has been defined in life and we've been defined in in multiple ways we've been defined by our circumstances. We've been defined by labels and judgments that have been placed on us. We've been defined by our actions and past results that we've created. And all these things have sort of created this box that we're in. And so as long as we're in that box, that's all we know, that's all we see. And yet outside of that box, there's so much more possibility. And so what we do, one of these tools is just to simply open people's eyes and say, hey, there is more for what you have in your life than what, you, what you're experiencing right now. You don't even see what's possible for you right now. And so that's, that's the, the thing that sort of launches the thing. We do a lot of identity work. And so instead of looking at the ways you've been defined in the past, we give people different ways to look. Defining uh, to themselves. Define, correct. So we, we define people through being, you know, uh, and being meaning what, what are some of the qualities mm -hmm. that naturally show up in you? Not, not what are the qualities that are supposed to, not try to be like that, you're supposed to do this. No, what's naturally, what, what are, and, and, okay. and you find it through desire. What, do you, what qualities do you desire to have? Do you desire to have compassion when you see someone in need? Do you desire to have excitement when you see an opportunity in front of you? What qualities do you naturally desire to have? And so we do a lot of work where people get in touch with what those qualities are for them. From there, <coughs> they don't know they no longer look at the circumstances or the labels or the judgments or the whatever they did in the past they're looking at what what would my life look like if I just showed up with these qualities every day and then now they look at okay well let's see at home if I showed up with this quality my relationship with my parents would be this way this way and that way 
wow, at school, if I showed up with these qualities, this is how I would work. This is how I'd get along with my friends. If I was in the community and I showed up this way, these are the things that I would do. These are the things I would, you know, find myself in. And there was one great thing that we did, remember, um, activity? Yeah. As we had them, you know, yeah. like we had them write out what their world yeah. looks like. Their existing reality and what they wanted their reality to become. In pictures, no words. Okay, and and, and was, what kind of results did you get? It was yeah. I mean, for them to shift their mind from saying this is it was so easy, like write my own reality, and when they shifted over there, it was you could tell people were kind of a little slow. They weren't sure, but as soon as they just started going, yeah. you could see like better. You know, parents being better. Um, there was a picture of like no guns being allowed, mm -hmm. no shooting on the streets. Like, I mean, these things that where they're said, like put on paper that this is what I don't want anymore. And then this is kind of who I am. And you could see each person, their own identity that showed up, the ones more compassionate, the ones more yep. excitement, like all of those different things kind of really Came showed together. up. Yeah. Very powerful. You know, um, on the other show, we got it. We did get a question um, in regards to character education versus character empowerment. Who wants to take that on? Yeah. Chris? <laughs> okay. Well, it's, it's kind of a loaded question, but... Um, We've got three minutes to go for it. Okay. <laughs> so typically, character education is, traditionally, there are certain values that, um, that are thought of as proper and good values. And so um, an organization, whether it's a school or whatever, say, okay, here are these great values, students, these are the best values that you can have. Um, I'm going to teach you about them, and then I'm going to expect you to follow those. You're going to see the value in it. You're going to enjoy it. And, and it's almost sort of like this force in mentality, um, where character empowerment is really where you realize that. You can. Well, you realize that, there are, that every person already has it. knows how to access those qualities. You don't have to force anything in. It's already there, so you, you can simply put them in a situation where they're saying, okay, these are the qualities that I'm taking a stand for, and here's how, and then you give them opportunities to engage those qualities in the real world, whether it's in school or beyond. You know, this, this obviously was started as a school program, but uh, it's the, gone beyond. These, these, people people yeah. are struggling in all facets of life right now, and, and they don't have to. There's a whole world of possibility outside of what they currently see right now. Yep. You talked about a challenge that you wanted to give our audience? Yeah, I, I would love to challenge the audience. Uh, anybody who, who feels you know, confined by the reality they're in right now, the circumstances they're in right now, you know, uh, I, want, I, I want to challenge them to, to just take a moment and, and look at what qualities did they most desire? What, you know, what qualities did they most, uh, most desire to see in themselves and in the people they love? and take a stand for those qualities. I want them to take a stand for these qualities every single day this week. I don't care if you choose one a day. Um, and we have, we have a free download mm -hmm. uh, that I believe it's on, on the, your, the, the w website. Okay. Yes, uh, on, on our Facebook. We're gonna, yeah, we're we're gonna, gonna put the that. link on our okay. Facebook page, which is WDHT TV. So if they go to Facebook, they can, they can see the link. And it's a free download the for download the- The download has 300 different being qualities that you can choose. You can choose any of the 300 any day. And I just, uh, I challenge, I challenge people to take that on yep, and find the one that, that's all mm -hmm. about them, what they really can be powerful with. And, and then you utilize that quality, engage that quality in everything they do all day long. Wonderful, absolutely amazing. Um, please send us your comments and go to the download um, and take a look at it and let us know what you think and let us know if it was something that uh, inspired you. Uh, and you can email us at wdhttv at gmail.com. For Chris, Doris, and Justin, this has been The Positive Zone.